<laughs> okay, so a little bit of context is what's happened here. Annabelle is actually part of an entire society of people that live inside of this cave. They are not quite human. They used to be human, but someone or something committed a number of experiments on them with the intent of creating some altered form of human, something that would be stronger or more loyal or whatever. And the result were these people. Now, that experiment involved killing the body and extracting the soul into a crystal like pretty much anything else that dies in this game. But instead of allowing the, instead of using the crystal for enchantments or consuming it for power or allowing the soul to proceed to the afterlife, it gets trapped in the crystal. And then while the body is dead, they augment the body with uh, abilities and stuff, magical abilities by implanting other crystals inside of them to make them more powerful. Then they take that crystal that contains their soul and use it to sort of resurrect the body with the mind, in a sense, of the person who, whose it was, whose mind, whose soul is now in the crystal. This was done a few hundred years ago, and their creator abandoned them and left them in this cave to basically live their own lives. And they've built this society around their own sort of hyper protection of the crystals themselves because if you possessed the crystal you possessed a power over them and they didn't want anybody to know about that so losing your crystal to somebody regardless of the circumstances is considered a high crime among these people punishable by death now annabelle lost her crystal when zealous took it off of her which if anybody had found out about it would mean that she would be executed so when this tot fellow showed up, she tried to convince him, like, just get my crystal back, nobody has to know. He's not hearing any of it, though. She broke their most, uh, most cherished rules, and now she has to die. Now, given, she, even though she would have been loyal to these people, she knows that they would execute her, so she's taking our side in this fight. Of course, it won't be much of a fight at all, because all these characters are way overpowered, and he will go down in one hit. Not balanced at all. <laughs> He's just standing right there. He should have ran off a little bit further. Okay, so even though you can actually wander through this, because <laughs> I didn't complete this part of the game. <laughs> we're, storyline-wise, trapped on the other side of this uh, collapse, uh, which cut off our retreat back, so we were forced to go through further. Annabelle assures us, though, that there is a way out of here. Now, what I essentially tried to do with these characters, these Animavas, the people living in the cave was I tried to make them it, it may not come across that well because I I didn't have enough time developing the game to really flesh out what they were supposed to be but the idea behind them was supposed to be that they existed in a kind of um, what, what would be the proper word for it a sort of aristocratic or a pseudo aristocratic society 
where they thought themselves better than everybody who lived outside of the cave. So it came, they dressed very fancy and they um, basically just thought themselves better than everybody based on what they perceived themselves to be as. Now, I, I didn't really finish drawing the graphics for the characters enough. And in fact, Tot used placeholder graphics completely, so you don't really see it in him at all. But they're all supposed to be wearing really fancy or sexy clothing. But since they lived in a freaking cave, it was all supposed to be like really dirty. So completely impractical clothing for the life they live. But they did it anyway because they thought so highly themselves. Which is why Annabelle is wearing a dress despite the fact that she lives in the cave. There's also supposed to be, uh, notice though, she is wearing a blue dress and a different dress than her character portrait. That's because the blue version was created later. I had the red version, and then I created this blue version of her clothing. In fact, it might be a completely different character model, in fact. But I never got around to updating the character portrait. But uh, when you look at the behavior and stuff, a lot of these characters, they sort of idealize themselves in certain ways, and... They're soon to be, uh, in a lot of ways, designed, because they were, in fact, designed it to a certain extent, to be sort of idealized humans. They're all supposed to be, like, hyper-attractive, but also hyper-strong and all that kind of stuff. So you have the character of Annabelle here, who's supposed to be a sort of very exaggerated feminine character in her appearance, at least. So she has ridiculously long blonde hair, long to a point of being impractical. Now the, the character sprite we're looking at here, it doesn't actually show completely because I, I hadn't finished it yet. But it, you could see it in her character portrait, which unfortunately I can't bring up right now. But her hair is like crazy long. It's actually supposed to reach down to her ankles. She's also quite thin, like too thin for a character who would be as strong as she is. And other things like she has large breasts and all that kind of stuff. To sort of give her an extremely feminine appearance. And this all plays into this society that they have. Now, had I actually created a character model for Todd, I probably never was going to. But I would have done something similar with him tried to make him look like a Magic Mike guy or some shit like that. This, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if I remember if I programmed a part of the game in where Annabelle explains what it is that she is. I may have done it, but it might have been part of data that was lost when my hard drive uh, fried on me. So it's possible that all of this could be explained a little bit later on in the game, but it's possible that that data is just missing. It's also not entirely clear, and it would have been later, that a lot of her power uh, comes from crystals that are implanted into her body. So it wasn't just the crystal that contains her soul, which she wore on her breast, it was a series of crystals that were placed into her arms and hands and stuff, allowing her to manipulate magic and use powerful attacks. So, holy shit! <laughs> the giant worm. This thing will go down quick. So you can see on her right hand, or her left hand rather, there is a gauntlet with some spikes. Now, you can't really see it that well. Because this is just a low-resolution character sprite. But it's a it's a sort of like Wolverine claws attached to a gauntlet that's wrapped around her wrist and her forearm. So her left arm was supposed to be the arm that possessed the physical strength. So she was sort of like in balance. The left side was her physical strength. The right side was supposed to be where her magic spells came from. So she had a crystal in her left arm, which gave her, which gave her physical power, and a crystal in her right hand or her right arm, which gave her magic powers. And in my initial like writing of the script for this game, 
I had envisioned a situation where it wasn't that her crystal remove was removed, that she was forced to go with them, but in the fight against Ansel and Zealous, her uh, crit, her right hand was removed, and basically she lost her physical strength when that happened. Now she still possessed a magical strength with that came out of her left or her right hand. So she was still capable of operating as a sort of a mage character, but she was sort of handicapped in that way. And it was because of that handicap and the fact that uh, by helping them, she had betrayed her people and she was outcast and they were going to go hunt her down that she was forced to join up with them. And I ended up rethinking that. It's like, you know what? That might end up being kind of weird. People might reject that concept. So I just had the whole crystal thing happen, happen. If this looks familiar, this is because we have been here before. This is the food that we had gone on that side quest to go and find. So as we progressed through the cave, and it took a few days for them to do it, our characters have reached the cave on the outside of Fort Festing. And the green snakes and the giant worm were all here. So we're just sort of... No one ever knew it. But both the prison and the fort were connected to each other through this cave system. So let's get out of here. Continue the game. Huh, even Annabelle didn't know what the end of the cave looked like. She was making that shit up. All right, let's move. All right, so this map is a little bit bugged. I think it's bugged anyway. I'm not quite sure I can... I got to get my way over to this door, but there are physical things standing in the way. Oh, nope, we made it. <laughs> Your different your you idiot 